Hello. Today we're going to be looking at the Top Umbrello Sport Modulator 2. This module is composed of two separate channels. It does slew limiting, sample and hold, track and hold, self oscillates at audio and LFO rates, and can do many, many other things. There's also a comparator circuit between the two channels that you can actually normalize with the couple switch to the sample and hold of the top channel and the input of the bottom channel. We'll explore that weird function later on. For the most straightforward patch possible, let's look at how the Sport Modulator 2 sounds as an oscillator. Taking the output into my mixer and flipping the cycle switch up, our rate now controls the speed, the frequency of the oscillation. This is a triangle output out of the regular output. The bottom channel is going to be a square wave with a fixed 50% duty cycle. So maybe instead of a totally raw wave, we want to make this more of a oscillator into a filter setup. So let's actually cycle the bottom channel, take the square wave output into the input of the top channel, Lowering the rate of the top channel, we get some low pass filtering. Now, one thing that this module loves is self feedback. So let's take the output of that top channel back into CV1. Now we can actually do the same thing when the top channel is self-cycling. Instead of getting a standard triangle wave, we can make it more logarithmic or more exponential. We get more exponential with the attenuverter inverter to the right. Triangle wave in the middle. To the left, a more logarithmic wave. This does change the overall rate of the oscillation, so you kind of have to fine tune it. It's not great for normal melodic behavior, but it does okay. Next, let's look at the sample and hold, track and hold, lag and hold, and slew limiting functions for CV. So for this patch, again, we will oscillate the top channel. We are going to plug a pitch sequence into the bottom channel to the input, take the output, to CV2, which tracks one volt per octave. Now if we lower the rate of channel two, you hear that glide. Now of course you could control this with CV, you could have per step slew limiting. Now we can also take the bottom switch, flip it up. Now this is a sample and hold. So if we take a gate from, say, Just Friends, it's just a square wave. The bottom channel will only change CV whenever the gate is high. Just a basic sample and hold. And we don't have to have a pitch sequence. This could be a noise source. Classic R2-D2 sample and hold to pitch. Right, let's go back to that pitch sequence. We're going to flip the mode switch down. Now it is a track and hold. So when the gate is high at the sample and hold input, no change is going to occur. When the gate is low, you hear a normal change, as if nothing was happening. If you were to totally unplug this, nothing's going on. Just a normal slew limiting. We can also combine these two functions.
So you hear the slew limiting into the track and holds, which you could call a lag and hold effect. Let me show you my favorite patch with the Sport Modulator 2. This is going to turn this module into a hard synced oscillator, very dirty, reminds me a little bit of the tone of the Mannequin's Mangrove. For this, we are going to cycle both channels. I'm going to take the output of the bottom channel into the gate input of the top channel. Now adjusting the rate of the top channel, we get a lot of tonal variation. So this top channel is putting out a hard sync triangle wave out of the regular output. The end output is a square wave. Now let's plug a pitch sequence into the bottom channel to hear how this sounds. Let's take that same pitch sequence into the top channel as well. Now, if you're at all familiar with the Mannequin's Mangrove, this is very similar to switching the module from constant wave to constant format. With a pitch sequence plugged into both, the top channel is changing its waveform at the same rate as the bottom channel which creates just a different tonality when you're sequencing it compared to not having the pitch sequence going to the top channel. You get all these beautiful subharmonics. It's kind of like the undertone series of the Manicurin's Mangrove. Next, let's listen to how the couple output works at audio rates. So we're going to just flip the couple switch up. For this patch, the bottom channel controls the overall frequency. Cycling these two channels makes all kinds of crazy sounds.
Let's look at how to use the Sport Modulator 2 as a stepped and smooth voltage generator. For this, the couple switch needs to be up. We're going to take a sine wave from the three sisters into our mixer. We're going to take a noise source, in this instance I'm using plats, into the input of the top channel. Then we're going to take the top output for a stepped random. The bottom rate sets the overall rate. So the top channel is going to give us a stepped voltage. The bottom channel gives us smooth voltage. This is going to be somewhat similar to the make noise woggle bug. It can be a little unpredictable at times. Could also just self cycle the top channel. This creates a little more predictable random. We're cycling between a high and a low. Let's take the top into the resonance input. Maybe instead of self-cycling, we take that noise source again. Let's change the outputs. Thanks for watching this demo of the Sport Modulator 2 by Top and Brillo. This is a very fun, weird module. I've gotten it to do a lot of different things. So thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it, learned something. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I always leave some patch notes down in the description, so feel free to check that out too. Thanks for watching. See you next time.